Okay, so this video was the one that got kind of cut short, so we're just going to kind of jump into it. And about halfway through the video, we're going to actually render the final image. I'm going to explain more about how to do that. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. 80, and we let it load. You'll see that... Oh, dar, sorry, that was scale. We're going to leave scale at that. And we, if we change Y to 180... Or no, sorry, we need Z. If you'll notice, I can look at the uh, axis axes over here, and Z is the one going up. So I'm going to change this to 180. So we're rotating around the z-axis 180 degrees. <sighs> that was location again. Well, it's hard to read on my screen. We'll try zooming in a bit. And now you'll notice our scene rotated 180 degrees. Um, so yeah, it's very cool. But um, it also rotates the uh, direction of the sun. So if we go into our camera view, you can see the sun's now behind us. Um, so that's kind of a drawback to HDRIs. Um, whatever is the brightest object in the scene, which in this case is the sun, that's where the light's actually going to come from. So I'm going to set this back to zero on the rotation. Um, so we technically don't even really need this texture mapping thing, but I'm going to leave it here just in case we want to change it in the future. Um, so yeah, that looks great. Um, anyways, with that done, I think we can actually start working on our um, final render. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm going to quickly turn off rendered view. I'm going to get out of my camera and I'm going to set this back to a timeline. Um, there's timeline, I don't know. timeline, and I'm just going to drag it down. I'm going to hit Alt H to bring everything back into our scene. Now this human guy, we don't need him anymore, so we're going to come over here and we're going to click on um, the eyedrop and make sure he's not rendered, which he isn't. Um, so now he's hidden, and we can always bring him back with Alt H if we want. Um, so yeah, let's. I'm gonna. But before we render it, I really need to explain to you some of the settings we can tweak. Um, so we're gonna go over to the render panel right here. So in the object panel, render button. This is where everything we can change about our rendering stuff. So first off, our render engine. We can choose between three of them: Workbench, which I believe is just like this weird solid-looking thing, which we don't want that. Um, Eevee, which is the new engine with 2.8, which is realistic lighting. Um, realistic lighting, and uh, but it also looks, it's basically like a game engine, so it isn't actually realistic, it's just fake. So you can see it kind of works if I turn on the uh, shading thing. I'm not sure how it's going to react with our HDRI. Um, you can see the program's a little frozen. So yeah, um, it, this is a bad... Um, example for um, EV actually. Uh, if we had actual proper point lights set up it would look much more realistic but uh, in this case we don't. But if we go to cycles which is um, the ray tracing realistic look um, if I change it to shading it might take a second and I'm gonna have to turn it off right away because it's gonna be laggy. Um, but you can see there's that realistic lighting that we were talking about and it's gonna look like a mess in there because um, there's just so much stuff, so we're going to turn that off. But um, there's a couple um, things you can tweak. Some of these I'm not too familiar with because it's new, but um, that you know I, I can teach you most of the important stuff for now. Um, so we first off, um, render engine, we want to make sure it's set to cycle so we can get the realistic ray tracing. Um, feature set, you can change it to experimental if you want to mess with like the experimental stuff. I don't think um, like micro displacement, micro displacements are in yet, so stuff like that. Um, but you can just leave it in supported for now. And you want to make sure your GPU device is set to GPU compute if you have a GPU set up. And you also always want to make sure that your, um, if you go to edit preferences and then general, um, you want to make sure your cycles compute device is set to CUDA if you have a GPU for it and you have these, you have your GPU selected and your uh, CPU if you can. So basically those two, as long as you have this, you should be fine. Color management. Um, you're going to want to leave most of this alone because Filmic is already the best one in, um, for regular renders. Um, look, you can change the contrast. Um, we might be tweaking with that later, but for now we can leave it to base. Basically, if you want a really low contrast picture, you obviously set it to low contrast and, uh, and the opposite for high. Um, so, but we're going to leave that alone. Sampling, this is a very important aspect. So the higher samples you have, the more realistic a render will look, but it will take a lot longer to actually render. 
Um, and the same thing for viewport, but the difference is in viewport, if I click render, it'll only try to render 32 samples and then it'll stop. But if we click render and render image and or animation, that's how many samples the render is going to try to pump out. Um, so we're going to go with a really high sample count. So we're going to go with, um, I think we get away with like 550. So this is probably going to take a while. It'll probably be like a 30 minute ish render. But since this is a still, we don't really have to worry about getting the render time low. Um, as long as it's reasonable. Um, some renders can take up to like an hour. Um, actually, I think I'm going to bump this up to 600 because we do have some glass and reflective surfaces. Um, so yeah. Um, you can also mess with other things like oh, the, the way it uh, does the, the path tracing, but that's very specific scenarios. I'm just going to leave it alone for now. Um, you can also change it to the seeds and stuff. So if your scene is... Um, I can't remember the benefit to this but like say if you have a lot of fireflies in your scene I think one of the qu quick fixes this doesn't get rid of all of them but you can uh, hit randomize so it'll look less evident that your scene has like kind of like a I don't know it's weird but we're not gonna be messing with it in this case um, light paths this one's pretty important so this is the amount of bounces a ray does um, from your surface to the camera before it gives up um, so basically if you have a lot of um, glassy surfaces in your scene, you're going to want to bump up like transparency and transmission. I think just transmission in this case. Transparency is for alpha textures. Um, but in this case, we don't really need to mess with this too much. So, But if you ever have rendering errors, like for example, if you, if you have a lot of grass that are 2D pictures, but they look black, you're going to want to mess with your transparency. Um, you just Google it, honestly, and it should be able to help you. Volumes, this is if you're using smoke, I believe. Um, but we're not using smoke or anything like that, so we can leave that alone. Hair, this is if you were messing with your hair. hair. If you had like a particle system for hair, again, we have a bathroom scene. We don't really need it. Simplify, I believe this is just for making your uh, viewport faster if you have a lot of um, tech, or if you have a lot of high poly models. Um, but we don't really need that right now. Um, I think it also is just for general optimization. I haven't been able to use that much yet, but... Um, yeah, we don't need to worry about that either. Our scene isn't too complex. Motion blur, this is if you had an actual, um, if you wanted motion blur, and this doesn't have to be just for animations. This could also be for, like, if you wanted your particles to leave, like, a trace, like, from a shutter of a camera. Um, you could turn on motion blur, but again, we don't really need that. Nothing's moving in our scene. Um, film, this is if you want to mess with the exposure. We might be coming back here to uh, mess with the exposure because we have an open window and the sun's coming in. And obviously it's going to be pretty bright. Um, that also might be something we have to edit in Photoshop. But anyways, um, performance. This one's pretty important. So thread mode. I'm going to leave it to auto detect so it'll detect how many threads I have in my CPU. Um, I have four threads and then hyper threading which bumps it up to eight somehow. Um, so you're probably going to leave that in auto detect. Tiles. This one's very important. So this is how big those little blocks are when you render an image. So for example, um, it's going to take a second because of that HDRI, but see all those little um, little squares right there? Um, basically, we want to um, you want to make them a certain size for your GPU. So every GPU is different. You can Google uh, Blender tile size, render tile size for GPU, and you can get you can probably get the specifics for your card. Um, I think with mine, 256 and 256 will look fine. Um, but I believe for, in Blender, this also is going to apply to your CPU, which with CPU, you want a smaller tile size, around like 32 or 64. But in this case, since I, my GPU is going to be faster than my CPU, I'm going to leave it at 256. Um, this is definitely something you want to change for performance reasons. Um, everything else, we're not going to have to really worry about. Um, bake, I've never had to worry about baking things. Um, this might be helpful for like animations if you want, if you have like a scene with things that, that don't move um, and you want to bake like shadows and stuff, apparently you can do that here, but I've never had to worry about it. Um, I have used this to bake normal maps and we haven't been, we haven't used that in this tutorial so you don't have to really worry about it, but normal maps are a very important aspect of 3D stuff. So if you want to learn more about game development and stuff, and just general optimizations, definitely Google normal maps. Um, but I'm not going to be covering them in this video. So in short, basically we just have to worry about the amount of samples we're taking. Um, and since that went pretty quick when I was rendering, I think we could even go up to 700. I'm, I'm feeling pretty um, confident in the amount of samples we can get out of this. 
Um, realistically, if you ever go above a thousand, you're probably doing something wrong. Um, even 700 is kind of pushing it, but I don't really care in this case. I'll let my computer chug it out. Um, one thing, if you have a computer that's really slow, like a laptop, and you can't really get these uh, um, renders pumping out, there's a couple different things you can do. One is you can bump your samples down and you can turn on a thing called denoising. Um, it's in the view layer tab right here. And if you turn this on, basically it'll kind of smooth everything out at the end. But the downside to this is if there isn't enough data to go off of, um, it'll look really blurry, kind of like a bad Instagram filter. Or it just kind of gets rid of finer details in general. Um, but I'm going to leave this on because I think it's going to look good for my scene. Um, I'm going to have enough detail for it to really be able to estimate the uh, the blurring, basically. And this is a feature that was new to, like, Blender 2.79, I believe. Um, and it's very helpful for, like, animations if you need to get a lot of frames out as quick as you can. Um, and if this still isn't enough for you, um, there's a website called Sheepit. Um, Sheepit. And basically, you can donate your computer render times. Oh, Google's getting mad at me. Um... You can donate your your computer to the uh, network to render other people's Blender renders, um, and then so like say you go say you're leaving for work, you can turn this on and your computer will start chugging it out, um, and um, oh looks like they're having some server problems. But basically, you can uh, donate to the network, and then when you want to render an image, you can uh, send in your Blender file, and they'll render it out for you. Um, there are some limits, like file size and stuff, but it's very good if you have a very basic scene that um, has a lot of reflections or something that your computer can't render, but um, but uh, you still want rendered out. So those are a couple of the options. Um, anyways, I'm gonna make sh make sure you save your um, Blender um, file before every render because if it does crash for some odd reason, um, you don't want to lose everything. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to let this render out. So just kind of refreshing ourselves. We have we made sure we hit Alt H so all of our everything in our scene is back and I'm going to leave this guy hidden by clicking on it and hitting H. Um, and our camera's in a good position. Um, one thing I can do is I can uh, add so our wall and ceiling texture right here. Um, we can make sure that the roughness is up um, to like 0.75 so it's very rough actually we probably want to go okay so I accidentally paused the last recording so um, for whatever reason I must have hit a hotkey um, so basically recapping on what I should have said in the recording is um, we were also I was also showing you um, the output um, settings you can do so if you go to output right here in the property panel you can also change what resolution you want your images to be rendered at so like 1080 um, 1080 by 1920 um, you can also change the percentage of the pixel scale or whatever scale for the render resolution. So basically if you set this to a lower, lower percentage it'll render faster but with less detail and it'll try to stretch it out to this um, 1920 by 1080. So in this case I'm going to leave it at 100 but you could probably get away with like 75 if you were in, if you were really trying to speed up a render. Um, also you have like aspect ratios if you want to border, if you want to crop it. Um, you also have frame start and end, so say you were rendering an animation, you can set what frame it starts on. This is more so for like uh, either physics simulations or um, like, uh, what is it, uh, character animations and stuff for things that are timed like that. Um, you also have frame rate, etc. Um, and then you also have your output location, so if you want to save them to a specific folder, so you can click on this file icon and you can choose like if you want to render them all to like an animation folder. Um, you can change different things about it if you want file extensions, whatever. You can change the format. So if you have an animation, you can render each frame as a PNG or a JPEG, and then you can put it together later in an editing so in an editing software, stuff like that. You can change like if you want it to be black and white, whatever. Metadata. I I don't know if you for whatever reason if you wanted specific metadata. Um, like lens, I guess, like the actual like focal length, I think, and stuff, which you can edit, by the way. Uh, if you go, if you click on the camera, you click on a little camera boy here. You can change your focal length, um, uh, uh, depth of field, and stuff. But anyways, going back to output, you can also change like 3D settings if you want it to be 3D, like this. Obviously, you need 3D glasses for it, but yeah. Um, there's also like post-processing, but we don't need to mess with that. So 
yeah, so basically I'm going to be rendering this at 700 samples. Um, and I tweaked the performance of the tile size and stuff. And yeah, that should be good for our scene. So I'm going to let this thing render out, and we're going to come back and see what the final result looks like. We might have to tweak some things as well, but we're just going to kind of see what it looks like. Okay, so it looks like our render is finished. It took about 18 minutes, but hopefully you guys, it will seem like it was much faster than that with the magic of editing. Um, and you can see it looks pretty decent. I mean, there isn't too much to complain about. Um, you can see we have some of that uh, really cool looking uh, reflection on the glass there of the lights and the uh, table. Um, you can see our little soap bottles and the little bar of soap there, and you can see our shower head. Um, you can see the really cool reflections on the tile down here. Um, from a window and uh, you can see the reflection in the mirror and since it has that metal on the edge you can kind of see it looks like a mirror even more <laughs> um, there's a lot that can be improved with this image of course that just kind of make it feel like not as realistic um, I think we could have done either a better job with the uh, the smudging maybe made it a bit less apparent and uh, let it cook a bit longer on the render um, because after the denoiser got to it, it kind of meshed it out a bit, you know, it doesn't look like perfect. Um, some other things is, uh, there's a lot of little tiny bits we could have added, um, like that cloth I was talking about, and, uh, that, and maybe like some molding to go along the edges, you know, if you look at your house, um, between the uh, floor and the wall, you usually have some form of, like, wooden molding going along it, um, stuff like that. Uh, just a lot of little nitty-gritty things, but in this tutorial, I just in this tutorial series, I really just wanted to help point out the basics of modeling for you beginners. You know, there's and this was already a pretty complicated course. I'm not gonna lie, I was going pretty fast towards the uh, middle to end, but um, yeah, and also other things like uh, because obviously there's no glass here, um, and that's not too big of a deal. What we could do is take this image into Photoshop, and we could uh, take a brightness um, like a brighten up the contrast or like uh, the exposure basically of this window to make it look like there's glass there because when if you take a picture of a window um, usually the glass is dirty enough to catch the light and then the camera overexposes it and it kind of like brightens it out just little stuff like that to make it look more realistic but overall I'm pretty happy with this and um, depending how much traction this series get I'm sure we're gonna come back and I can show you more about like cloth um, cloth simulations and adding you know just more bits and details and I mean it, it looks pretty good you know you can also see the um, the actual like granite right there and everything um, but yeah the main problem with this scene is that um, the lighting is also very dim so you notice it was still pretty fuzzy what and this is with 700 samples so I mean if we bump this down to like or if we had a really bright light in here, um, it'd have more um, light to bounce off the walls into the camera um, in Blender, so it would there would be less noise. That's what all that was. But um, you know, for what we got, it was pretty decent, um, especially since we're only really rely, uh, relying relying on a sun coming through the window and um, the lights in the ceiling. So yeah, and this is also rendered in 1080. So in my I have a 4K monitor, so you know, 4K. It'd be more like this size. So on an iPhone screen and stuff, this will look a lot better. But on my 4K monitor, I can really notice all those little blemish blemishes and defects. Um, we also could have probably made the glass um, a bit uh, clearer, you know, how we edited it, edited the uh, material and made it darker. But uh, yeah, I think this was a pretty good tutorial to kind of get beginners introduced into Blender. And it looks just realistic enough with these textures that um, you could show it to a friend and they'd say, oh, that's pretty cool. And you can say, hey, yeah, I made that. So yeah, so that's going to be it for this series so far. Um, if you have any comments, um, I'm open to all the constructive criticism and stuff. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe and you can get updates on when I post new videos. So that's all that I got for you to now. Um, and I'll see you in the future. Uh, thanks for watching.